congratulate you on the upcoming release of your latest music tomorrow. Um, can you talk a little bit about the title and the, the overall theme of the project? Well, the title of the project is 222. And back in January of 2014, we started saying the Lord's Prayer. And uh, we noticed that um, as the year progressed, we noticed that we were seeing triple digits and double digits like 111, 222, 333, like 1010 or 1111. And we, uh, and so I started praying, I said, Lord, what's the significance of these numbers? And I just felt impressed in my heart to say the Lord's Prayer. So fast forward to, you know, here it is, 2022, and um, we're still saying the Lord's Prayer every day. And so many times we see these numbers. And so sometimes we'll say the Lord's Prayer several times a day. And um, and we've noticed that God has really strengthened our prayer life because of this. And um, so on the project, we decided that we would even put the Lord's Prayer as a bonus track. And uh, that way, when people are listening to the project, then we'll end end it with a prayer. And, uh, of course, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, this is how we're to pray. And um, so anyway, we were trying to decide what um, to name the, the album. And, and, you know, a lot of times it'll come from an, a title of a song or even maybe um, just a word from one of the songs. And we'd already decided that we would release the project on 2-22-22. And then while we were in the studio, we thought, why don't we just name the record 222? And so this really has a lot of hidden meanings for us as well. But we um, we just felt like that, that this was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to release a project on 222.22 and then named the record 222 and uh, the number two represents harmony and we do pray that these songs will bring healing to everyone that listens that, that's great there's definitely a lot of significance behind that i i'm curious if there's a track or even a lyric within one of the tracks that you're you're most excited for the world to hear in the current state well really i believe that all of the songs are very relevant to where we've been over the last few months. And um, the song that we have out right now, Answer is Jesus, that's the song that really speaks our heart. And it's very, very real. It's a very, um, just a very candid song about how I think that we as Christians and as, you know, honestly, I think everyone could say we're just tired we're tired of COVID. We're tired to move on. We're tired, you know, of, of violence in the streets. Um, we're tired of politics dividing us. We're tired of people being sick. We're tired of addictions, taking lives way too young. Um, and, but, but it's time, but there is a solution to all of this. Um, and that is Jesus. And the thing about it is, um, it's time for the church to, to be the salt and light. And I really believe that this song really speaks truth. And I pray that um, that it will also speak encouragement to people and know that, you know, we don't have to roll around in all of this, but we do have a solution. We can get out of where we are in this state that our country's in, that the world's in, uh, the churches are in. We can get through this with Jesus. And he really is our only answer. Absolutely. So you did mention that you pre-released that track ahead of the full project. How, how, have, how have the listener uh, responses and feedback been to, been to you and your group so far for that one? Honestly, I will say we just staged the song for the first time this past weekend, and we are absolutely overwhelmed at the response of this song. Because I really think that this song is hitting the heartstrings of the body of Christ. And I think that everyone can relate to this song. For sure. Uh, so you co-wrote many of the tracks on the, on the album. I'm curious how you think the overall sound and quality was enhanced by the collaboration that you had for, for these tracks. Well, I really feel like that we're at a different time. I think that everyone's on a different level. 
And I do believe that God has elevated our ministry just simply because of the things that we've been through. And, you know, the trials always build the testimonies. And so I do feel like that we're at a different place in our ministry and in our personal walks of life. Um, being a writer on most of the songs on the project, I had the privilege of writing with incredibly great writers. And in the meantime, you know, these writers have been through stuff. So I think that all of the writing has elevated to another level. That's, that's fantastic. I, I'm curious, we, we've talked a good bit about the heart behind this album and all, all of that that's gone into it. I'm curious how that influences what you're, how you're looking to define success for this project once it's fully released. Well, I really, I mean, I do have a lot of high expectations. I do. I can't help it. I'm <laughs> so excited. This has been months in the making. I mean, I started writing songs for this project in uh, while I was battling COVID in June of 2020. So, um, so this has been a very long process. If I'd have had my way about it, this album would have come out a year ago because I was ready for you know coming out of this pandemic i was ready for these songs to be heard but little did we know that we would even still be going through a pandemic even a year later and now going into 2020 i mean we're still seeing remnants from from the virus and from the pandemic and so um god's timing is everything but i think the main thing is of course i wish that the numbers of this project i wish that god would just let our numbers elevate and that everyone would have this record i mean that would be my greatest desire for as far as the, the actual cd itself and the project because you can stream it on all of the uh, social sites as well like apple music spotify etc but um but honestly my heart is that i just pray that people will be encouraged and that this album will bring healing to hearts that have you know people from people who have lost loved ones we've all lost loved ones to COVID I mean we we've, we've all um you know most of us have had COVID and but the thing is we don't want to stay in COVID we want we don't want to stay in the pandemic but we want to move on. People are ready to move out. We don't want people to come to our concerts and hear a whole two hours of COVID, you know, and talking about pandemic. We're tired of talking about it. We're ready to move on, but we're ready to talk about Jesus. We're ready to talk about the solutions. Absolutely. I'm curious, since you mentioned that uh, you, you wrote this and started writing this quite a few years ago, which, which was actually the first track that you wrote for the album? Um, let me think, probably, uh, probably the answer is Jesus. That would be it because actually um, in June of 2020, I was battling COVID-19 and I didn't know anyone else that, ha that, that had it. I didn't, I, I don't even know exactly even how I got it. So of course I was a little nervous about it because I thought, oh my goodness, you know, how am I going to deal with this? You know, we're, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm feeling so odd. I've never felt like this before. You know, my body feels like it's shutting down. And, and of course, I did not have COVID as bad as a lot of people. But, you know, it was bad for me because I, I, didn't, I didn't know what to expect. And, and then a month prior to that, my husband's uh, a family member had um, overdosed. And he was 21 years old. And we were devastated. So I remember sitting out in the front yard, had COVID, and our great nephew had overdosed, and which is sad. And yeah. I can remember thinking, you know what? For for a week now, I have been feeling so bad. If I'm going to be here in this place, if God allowed it to happen, then I'm going to pray my way through this, and I'm going to write my way through it. And so I called my writer friends and uh, on Zoom, and I said, okay, let, let's let's get busy and we literally pulled our sleeves up on the song and said okay let's let's hit the issues let's talk about it let's don't surface we don't let's don't sugarcoat anything let's get real with it and this this song was actually a two-day ride for us because it was so intense but i do feel like that we got it to where it needed to be with the lord's help 
That's that's great. And you, it, certainly a lot uh, that goes into that there. Um, with, with with your music being so personal to you, I, I'm curious where else you draw inspiration from aside from your your uh, life experiences, either for your music or for your lyrics. Um, I feel like I'm always inspired by something. You know, it's like I can hear an incredible sermon, like the song The Keepers that's on this new record. Um, the preacher had been very sick. And it was his first Sunday morning back after not preaching for weeks. And we were just privileged to be there. And he had like some notes um, with names on it. And he started off and he said, okay, first of all, I have my notes here, but I'm not gonna name names because these are the people that never wanna be recognized and they never want their names called out. But I wanna recognize them this morning. And he started describing, you know, for the people that stand out in the parking lot every Sunday and Wednesday, and they direct traffic in the, in you know, as people are coming into the church, helping them park their cars in the rain, in the snow, in the cold weather, in the hot, the, the heat, and he said, they're keepers. And he started talking about the keepers of the church, and he never named their names. It inspired me so much that two days later, I was sitting in my kitchen on a Zoom call, and um, with my friends Mitch Wong and Tony Wood, and we wrote the song, The Keepers. So I really get inspired from preaching uh, from the Word. I can hear, I can, I can read or hear a scripture, and, and I'm thinking, oh, wow, okay, this, okay, we can, we can do something with this. And uh, so I, uh, I really am always looking for you know, for song ideas, and I'm a tune person and an idea person, and sometimes I can hear something, hear a a song, and it will, you know, it will trigger this, you know, this tune in my head, and I'll just turn, you know, turn my, turn that song off, and get on my phone and record a, just a part of a tune, just to get an idea, so I, you know, and I always record it so I won't forget it. Absolutely, that's great. So I have one final question for you, and it can be a musical or not musical answer, but what are you most expectant for in this year? Honestly, the word would be seek. I'm seeking the Lord, I guess more than ever, because we've all been through so much. And, you know, God commands in his word to for us to persevere. And I think while we're persevering for the Lord, we want to seek him seek his will his perfect will and to seek his guidance and where we're supposed to go and and really to be more like him to seek ways of being more christ-like that is great that's a great word i just want to thank you again karen for taking the time today to talk to us about your uh, new project here excited for it to be out thank you so much jesse and thank you for the interview and Honestly, we pray that God will continue to to use you as you continue to spread the gospel. And also to all those who are listening, we pray that God will continue to meet your needs and that God will continue to help you to persevere for him. And I pray that you can do it joyfully, even through your sorrows, through the things you've been through. We are facing better times and God is going to restore everything that's been lost in your life. And we believe that. So be encouraged and know you are going to make it. And we do ask that you pray for Karen Tech and New River as we continue to spread the gospel. Absolutely. Thank you again, Karen.